America Room. My name is Danielle Morita, and I will be reading my new book, Mr. Maloof. The Building of America Room displays the tools, the toils, and the trades that were used to build America. On display are cotton, sugar cane, and tobacco, just a few of the many types of massive slave labor that brought wealth to America. I hope you enjoy the reading. This is Mr. Maloof. Mr. Maloof was a silly guy, his mother used to say. He'd hide and play tricks from sun up to sun down each and every day. He'd pop out from behind the curtains or even the bathroom door. One day he hid under the rug in the middle of the living room floor. Little Maloof, you're such a goof. One day you will see not everything is a trick, but rather real as real can be. Silly mommy, what do you know? I'll be doing tricks as long as I grow. Okay, Mr. Maloof, but what happens when you're old? One day you will stop growing and these tricks will be too bold. Never will that happen, he thought, until that thought festered and grew quite a lot. And then one day it happened, he was goofy no more. He didn't plan schemes that involved popping out from the floor. The day had actually come as his mother said it would. There were no jokes to tell, not even if he could. A frown on his face stretched from his left ear to his right. It was the frowniest frown that anyone had seen that night. A frown so frowny, the pressure built up and he couldn't bring it downy. And out it sprouted one single hair, not enough for the smallest of pony. But oh, what was this, this color up here? There was no doubt it was crystal clear, a sliver of color just above his right ear. Look at you, Mr. Goof Maloof, sitting on your chair, grumpy as can be now that you have this bright blue hair. You huff and pout and stomp about, wondering how this came to be. It wasn't there a week ago, not one, two, or even three. No brushing nor combing, crimping nor curling would tame this little blue beast. There it stood, up on his head, pointing 87 degrees northeast. There he was thinking thoughts on how to make this quite quick. He could pluck it with tweezers or snip it with clippers. Yes, that would do the trick. But when he tried to trim and cut, his clippers all broke and he had zero luck. Then he jumped up and out. A hat, he said, will permanently cover this obnoxious little blue on my head. That afternoon, the old Mr. Maloof sat rocking on his stoop until three young kids came passing by and said, Hey there, you old goof. They laughed and teased until the old man sneezed and his blue hair burst right on through. The hat stood no chance when it came down to it. What bad luck, I should have knew it. Then one kid yelled, his hair is blue. No way, that can't be true. The oldest kid pulled off her hat and blue hair fell right down her back. Mr. Maloof sat still in shock. They waved and continued on around the block. They'll be back, he knew, and planned out just what he'd do. A prank of all pranks. They won't know what hit him. I'll hide in the bushes, then shout, Blue Bligum. Days came and went, but there he stayed, determined not to move. Then one day, here they came, strolling straight down his avenue. When the moment was right, he struck, oh, he striked and those kids yelled out with all their might. A moment of silence and everyone laughed. What's your name, old man? They asked curiously. Mr. Maloof is what my mother has always called me. We'll get you next time, you silly old goof. And they did, and they did, and they did, and they did. Although Mr. Maloof had grown quite old, his silliness was an art. And that little blue hair that showed up that day reminded him we are always young at heart. This is Mr. Maloof. We officially launch on March 1st. You can pre-order now on Amazon.com, Target.com, and anywhere books are sold.